Thank you guys for being here today. I appreciate you being here. That's a big deal. Uh, so thanks again. In 1998, the Mexican wolf was reintroduced into the wild in southwestern Arizona. Their numbers have risen close to 100 during that time. They are the most endangered subspecies of wolves in the world. Today's goals are three goals. First is to understand the importance of the southwest, southwestern ecosystems that wolves have and being a part of that. The second is to become aware of the issues of their introduction, reintroduction actually. The third is how we can help. Biologists believe that wolves will restore balance to the southwestern ecosystems by keeping their prey populations healthy and in check. According to the Arizona Game and Fish, wolves strengthen deer, elk, and javelina populations by preying on the old, the sick, and the young and prevent their populations from going so numerous that they overgraze and destroy habitat that countless other species depend on. Also according to the Arizona Game and Fish, there have been negative interactions with livestock operators and also impacts on local communities and wild ungulates, wild ungulates being wild herds of uh, elk and deer. Since 1998, the wolves have been limited to a range of 16% of the Blue Range recovery area. There's great news. Up until a month ago, they were confined to this small area. Since the news, the Arizona Fish and Wildlife Service established a new area for the wolves. This area extends south of the current boundary to U.S.-Mexican border and it, from Arizona also into New Mexico. Let's review what we've learned so far. The Mexican wolf has been reintroduced to balance the southwestern ecosystems. They've had problems with livestock, local communities, and wild ungulates in the small area they were once confided to. They were recently granted a larger new area and will support the recovery efforts. They need help promoting awareness still. By volunteering, we can educate the public of the role wolves have in these ecosystems. We can educate hunters not to mistake wolves for coyotes and also educate drivers to be careful along the roadways because the wolves use those roadways for themselves as well. Also, it's a great deal of help to collect donations. I will leave you with some flyers today uh, with a number for the American Wolf Recovery Program. I would encourage you to contact them and put forward any kind of effort you can. Also, there is a couple web, uh, websites that I've included in the flyer that I would uh, suggest maybe promoting the uh, program through uh, social media, since we all know it's so uh, powerful. Maybe post the recovery program and let your friends know how important uh, this, this is. On a closing note, I'd like to leave you with a quotation from the Arizona Game of Fish. The revised rule expands the area where wolves are allowed to occupy and increases the service's ability to further the conservation of one of the nation's, nation's rarest animals. Thank you. Best speech I've heard all day. We're still rolling. At this time, I'd like to open up to any questions you might have. Is the program in Arizona? Yes. And in fact, I don't have exact location. If you call this number, uh, I'm pretty sure, I know it starts with an A. I can't remember the name of the city here in Arizona, but it's in southern Arizona, close to the border. Nice. Yeah, and it's pretty exciting once I found out that it was going to be expanding to New Mexico as well. So. Prior to the reintroduction, were they completely uh, wiped out in our area? Before 1998, they were. And so slowly, between 1998 and now, the, the numbers have risen to 100, close to 100, just below. If I may, just one more thing. Now they expect that number to rise considerably more. Uh, within that confined smaller area that they once had, uh, it was hard for them to populate 
the way that the program uh, expected them to. So now they'll be able to do so. Uh, recently, I just read where a wolf that made it all the way from Yosemite National Park down to Arizona was shot and killed. Is uh, Are they still in, on the endangered list, and is it against the law to shoot a wolf? They are an endangered species, and they're on the list, yes. Uh -huh. So th then the person that shot this wolf would be up for oh, absolutely. being arrested. Better off in prison. Absolutely. And I think one of the efforts that volunteers make is to educate hunters to understand that they are a part of the ecosystem, whereas before they might not have mistaken them for a coyote or something. So, What's the biggest distinction between coyote and wolf? Like, um, size? Yeah, probably? definitely a size, as far as my understanding. I mean, the adult wolves I know from personal experience are like 100 to 130, right. 40, I would think, somewhere in there. Coyotes, Coyotes are, are much skin. smaller, but I think the colors are... Pretty similar. If you you know if you look to see all the gray and the white and the black right. and stuff, I mean they look pretty similar. I think they look more like dogs. Huh? And these are just pups right here. So cute. They're cute. And you were you were owners of wolves. Yeah, we, yeah, we had some wolves. That was pretty cool. Hannah and Haley. Yep. Yeah. Very kind, lovable creatures. Yeah. So you are. Um, involved with this program since you were just a young, a young lad. Yeah, I mean, it's excellent news. Yeah, they're they're, they're they're very very cool. I it's enjoyed awesome. I enjoyed having them in my life. No longer with us anymore, but yeah, they were cool. It's great news. You guys, thanks very much. I'd like Thank to you. give you some of this information here and wrap it up.